Any views, thoughts, and opinions expressed by the journalists and guests are solely that of the journalists and guests and do not reflect the views, opinion, policies, or positions of positive lifestyle management. <laughs>
Now, if I was to answer that, I would say, honestly, we're right on time. And the reason why I say that, I got to, can I use a Bible reference in this real quick? Yeah, we, we, we studied, we're breaking it down. Yes, sir. In the book of Daniel, right? It talks about, you know what I'm saying, the prophecy being sealed until a certain amount of time. And that prophecy could only be open, unlocked, or revealed when there was an increase in knowledge. Because the minds at that time were not able to comprehend what was actually being contained in the book. Okay. It wasn't for them. It was for a future generation. Okay. So let so, me ask this question. Go ahead. So that means, like you said, it wasn't for them. It was for the future, right? Mm -hmm. And those at that time could not comprehend or would not be able to comprehend what was being revealed. Facts. They could only see it in the frame in which they were existing in. They couldn't okay. see what would come down the line with it. Okay. Next question mm -hmm. is this here. This blueprint. Remind you now, peoples could not understand the blueprint because they did not understand that the blueprint was not something that should be kept secret and hidden from the public when it was made for the public. But hey. we were still as a whole trying to keep it quiet when it was already in the public. Mm -hmm. So therefore, those who, who was at that time could not comprehend what was going on because they were still trying to keep some secret and hidden and unseen that was already seen and unhidden. Right. Okay. Now, so we see what the vision is then. The vision, the overall vision was growth and development, right? Right. So, there were steps, stages, and degrees and methods that we were going to have to take in order to reach growth and development, right? Mm-hmm. And that's where the blueprint comes in because the blueprint is going to the blueprint is actually breaking down those steps, stages, and degrees that we were going to have to go through in order to reach the true essence of growth and development, right? Correct. Okay, so now let's get into the study. We understand that. Everybody yeah. understand that. The audience understands this. Here, right? finish, they will. They will. Okay. The chapter two. The vision, it would be an era, an era, E R R O R, to attempt to describe the vision singular. So that means it would be an era to try to describe the vision as one particular thing. That'd be a mistake. Right. It'd be a mistake. For the vision contains more things hoped for than. The American dream. And we're going to break the American dream down in future episodes. But just know this here. The American dream is a trap. Thanks. And we're going to break that down in future episodes. We're not going to get ahead of ourselves. Truth. Our foundation. Truth. Cannot be changed then, right? Nope. All right. So truth the foundation be, is solid. The foundation is solid. So if we standing on truth, that means that your foundation is solid. Absolute, unalterable. The vision is based on truth, which is solid, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Throughout history, the philosophical principles of love, life, loyalty, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding have been tried and proven to be necessary and unchanging truths. All right, we got to do something, though, bro. 
Yes, sir. You got to do something. There's a word in there that has to be broke down. You cannot go forward without breaking this word down because we got to be able to understand, man, that we are teaching the masses. And the word that we have to break down is philosophical. Mm -hmm. Philosophical. And what this word means. And what it stands for. So, philosophical. Philosophical means in the Western Dictionary is devoted to or learned like or suited for a philosopher sensibly composed or calm as in a difficult situation relation uh, rational hmm devoted to or learned so if we change that we could say through our history the learned or devoted principles of love, life, Lord, to knowledge, wisdom, and understanding have been tried and proven to be necessary and unchanging truths. Truth mm -hmm. changes not. Truth changes not. So our six principles of growth and development and our six universal laws of existence which I love, life, Lord, knowledge, wisdom, and, and understanding have been tried and proven to be necessary and unchanging truths. They don't change. They don't change. Truths that are universal in their nature and application. Universal meaning one script. One, this throughout the universe. This is you all over. No matter where you go. No matter where you go. No matter what you're doing, it can apply. It says these principles have been included in the philosophical teachings of civilization since the beginning of recorded history. Since the beginning of time, bro. So that means if you're looking at it from a Quranic standpoint or a spiritual standpoint, from the Bible, from the Circle Seven, from whatever, these truths have been around, man. Love, life, Lord, and knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. For instance, the most recognized ingredients that constitutes civilizations are one. A group of people that has come together to form a community that has specific laws and obligations and is based upon love for the life of its members and encourages loyalty to the group's laws and principles. And two, a group of people that has developed a system of knowledge, communication that is based upon reading and writing. That's a lot in the short little paragraph, bro. So let's go back. And let's start with one. These are the ingredients that constitute civilization. One, a group of people that has come together to form a community mm -hmm. that has specific laws and obligations and is based upon love for the life of his members. Now, TP, uh -huh. and as you were reading that, right, my mind flashes something in the black and white where it breaks down what love to you means. And love to you mean I am willing to accept responsibility for you and I am willing to share responsibility with you. Now, let's look at that because that definition right there in place of the word love is what you're saying you're willing to be for the life of the members. You are willing to take responsibility and share responsibility for the life of the members. Yes. That's being accountable for one another and responsible for one another. 
Exactly. I am that's my brothers and sisters on. keepers. That's right. Exactly. Now, in that dealing with the um the first law of existence being the ability to treat others in the manner you desire to be treated. That's the universal law of existence. Facts. So not only am I'm going to take responsibility for your life and share responsibility for your life, I'm going to treat your life the way I want my life treated. Okay. Those are the two key points in the very beginning of our foundation. Treat others the way you want to be treated and love your brothers and sisters the way you love yourself and the way you would like to be loved. Yes. Based upon based upon the philosophical teachings and the unchanging truths of love, life, Lord, acknowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Exactly. Okay. The second half of number one is and encourages loyalty to the group's laws and principles. What is loyalty? Service and cooperation to the organized scheme of things. Okay. So you're going to encourage loyalty to the group's laws and principles. What are so our six principles? Not to the person. To the laws and the group's principle. It's the group laws and the group principle, not the group, not a person in the group. So my loyalty is to the collect the laws and principles. Okay, of, okay. Of the group. All right. For therefore, if we're breaking this down mm -hmm. in the black and white. It teaches us that when it comes to the organization, the individual is subordinate to the organization. Right. That is the group. And the organization is its laws and its principles. And within the, the organization is based upon mm -hmm. the laws and the principles. Okay. I just want to make sure we're on the same page. You know, I don't want no yeah. misunderstanding. So I got to ask questions. Yes, we are on the same page. Now, let's get this understood to the audience. Uh huh. This is not something that we sit back and we discuss and try to come up with the answers before we come on 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 the program. We're doing this here as we going, bro. No, that's facts. We're doing this as we going. Two, a group of people that has developed a system of knowledge communication that is based upon reading and writing, which deals with what? Black and white. <clears throat> what do reading and writing involves? Literacy. And what is literacy? Literacy comes from what? Education. Education. So within this group that has the, the group has to develop a system of knowledge, communication that is based upon reading and writing. A system dealing with overall education. I have a question. Yes. In, in that context, right, the word system, a system can be understood as a structure or a uh, chain of command so to speak for lack of a better term in this case let's say structure okay that's the system that's the system a structure that is based upon education because you got to have the knowledge all right watch this when knowledge became systematized structured Right. All right, organized and directed to a specific purposes. Civilizations were built around the effect. Question. Yes. Let's define civilization. And the reason why 
I want to define civilization is because I want the audience to have a broader vision of what these principles entail and these laws when we say universal. Because mm-hmm. a, a person may think civilization is just their household or just their neighborhood when a civilization could be way more than that. Okay. Civilization. Uh Uh-huh. The process of civilizing or becoming civilized. Okay, that's not what we're looking for. Two, the conditions of being civilized, social organizations of a higher order marked by the development and use of a written language and by advance and by advances in the arts and scientists government etc watch the definition number three the total culture of a particular people's nation period mm. so we can look at two or three the conditions of being civilized social organizations of a higher order marked by the development and use of a written language and by advances in the arts and science slash and governments etc three the total culture of a particular people nation period all right so now in in definition number two uh uh-huh i heard a description of education economical political and social in that definition yeah because we're dealing with the arts and scientists and sciences and government education is a science yes economics is a science Fact. Politics is a science. Social yeah. development is a science. Okay. It also deals with government. Because if you look at government, government shapes the education, the economics, the political, as well as the social development of that of that particular nation. Yes. Okay. In time, back to the back to the the reading. The reading. In time. Particular individuals excelled in knowledge, thereby acquiring wisdom and understanding. So as the knowledge increased, Mm -hmm. based upon the first two, uh, what civilization is, which is love, life, loyalty, me love love for the life of its members and and encouraging loyalty to the group's laws and principles. And number two, they developed a system of knowledge communication that is based upon reading and writing. And mm-hmm. as that knowledge dealing with education increased, thereby acquiring wisdom, wisdom which is knowledge being knowledge being applied wisely, right? Right. And understanding. So we know understanding is the crowning point of our six principles, right? And the definition of understanding in this paragraph is very powerful when it comes to why it's the crowning point. Now watch this. Mm-hmm. Based upon their wisdom, the ability to apply knowledge wisely, and mm-hmm. understanding the ability to settle disputes and maintain order through a fair and just interpretation of the laws and principle, these particular one became known as kings, queens, and the ruling class. Right. So as their knowledge increased, mm-hmm. so that their their social status within the nation. Correct. Okay. So in that context, as their knowledge increased, their social status increased, which means their responsibility had to increase as well. Exactly. So so now, let's look at this. Let's look at the flip side of that then. Uh Uh-huh. If your knowledge is regressing your social status in the world or in the nation of that particular nation regresses right correct so the the least you know the least power or acknowledgement or social status you have the closer you are to the end of your own civilization okay all right now watch this mm-hmm the fall of mankind came from man's misuse selfishness of these laws and principles 
in uh, order that he may dominate others through the, their ignorance, illiteracy. Hold on, man. Hold on. Yeah, I was, about to, I was about to say something. Hold, I'm glad you hold, started talking. Hold, I'm glad hold you started on, talking. man. Let's go back. Let's go back. It says, the fall of mankind. Uh -huh. So long as everything was being done in a righteous manner. According to laws and principles. According to the laws and principles. Yep. According to the universal laws and principles and the universal in the universal truths of love, life, Lord, and knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, civilization and nations flourished. Yes. Okay. The fall of mankind came from when man's misuse, mm -hmm. selfishness uh -huh. of these laws and principles in order that he may dominate others through their ignorance, through their illiteracy. Yep. Elaborate on that, bro. Okay, cool. Because I was... Mm, I got kind of enthusiastic right there, so bear with me. In essence, what's being said is that if a person is not familiar with the laws and principles, the truth, their foundation, what they stand on, they can be manipulated, deceived, exploited, excuse me, even sent down the wrong path by someone who is more familiar with those laws and principles. So the now, man... So the, hold mm -hmm. on, let me just hold that thought. I yes, want to get this understood. So the man with one eye in the land of the blind is, is king. king. So yep. therefore, if that person with the one eye has a minuscule amount of knowledge mm -hmm. or understand or wisdom or understanding, a minuscule amount, that person becomes the king of the ignorant. Yep. So ain't he going to misuse them because can't nobody yeah. else see in the country. So in this talk, in the, and in this case, we're talking about the mentally blind then. Yes, the mentally blind. Not physical okay. blind. Okay, let's, now go what, let's go there. What's crazy is I'm looking at this, right? And I'm starting to reflect back on things. Like, I like learning, personally. I enjoy it. And I looked at how I view people that didn't want to teach me things. But I watch also how people that don't want to teach me wanted to control everything I did. They will only give me enough information to manipulate me into doing something or controlling me. They would never give me enough to stand on my own. So they were giving me the illusion of truth. With no foundation to it. That's what that's what's been that's what's been going on. Let's just say in our understanding of life, right? Right. And our understanding of uh, and our understanding of way of living in life. That is what's going on with today in society, man. Yes. All these podcasts that we have been doing talking about COINTEL Pro. The uh, the infiltrators and the manipulators and all this here, that was just summed up, bro. In one sentence. Yep. Facts. Wow. And it, it never clicked in my head that it was that was being expressed until we just went through it right here, and I looked and I'm like, wow. Yeah. Eventually, man's kind fall. From these laws and principles brought about slavery and the law of the jungle. So we're talking about a physical slavery, a mental slavery, uh, emotional slavery, spiritual slavery, educationally, economically, politically, social, yeah. all forms of slavery. Yep. And the law of the jungle. Kill or be killed. Dog eat dog world. Which is the basis of capitalism. Predator Ooh. and prey. Mm. 
which is the basis of capitalism. Mm, mm, mm. You want to pick up, bro? <laughs> cool. And the intelligent dominating the, the illiterate, which we just got finished discussing. It goes on to say, although the reemergence of these principles is changing much of that, let us not forget that the downfall of many civilizations was a direct or indirect result of these principles being neglected by the masses and or the ruling class. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. It uh -huh. says, it says, although the re-emergence yes. of these principles is changing much of that, so the re-emergence, the bringing back of the, rebirth. the six the, the, the six principles of love, life, Lord, and knowledge, wisdom, and understanding is changing much of all that the slavery, the mental slavery, the strong praying on the weak, the, the, the literate praying on, praying on the illiterate, dog eat dog world, slavery, mm -hmm. and all that is being changed through the six universal laws of existence and the six principles of growth and development. We must never forget that the res direct result or indirect result of the downfall of many civilizations came from the neglect by the masses and or the ruling class. The neglect of these very universal laws of existence and principles. Yep. So the now, masses neglected mm -hmm. them. Why did the masses neglect them? They were illiterate. They were illiterate and the ruling class did not want them to become literate. So they did everything they can, kept all kind of trinkets and all kind of illusions in front of them so they could yeah. continue to flourish off of that illiteracy. Correct. Okay. All right. Now, this is where the reading gets very critical for the student because it says, through intense study, observation, research, and many trials and errors, these principles have been time tested and found to be true. Now, I want to stop right there for a reason, right? Because in our own individual growth and development as a person, we have to study these principles and these laws, observe them, and do the research on them ourselves to see that they're real. Because we yeah. can't take it on face value. That's right. We got to do our own due diligence to show and prove that, yeah, this is real so I can trust and believe in it. They are, they are necessary parts of any society. This fact alone makes these principles universal in their application. For us to imagine the six principles of growth and development to be anything less than universal laws and principles is to shortchange ourselves of our rightful place in history. Mm. 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 Hold on. Damn. Can we get a breakdown of that, bro? Yes, sir. I was that's I was it. in my head with it right then. Now, we had a saying in the street, right? When you're getting a little money. Yeah. Treat yourself. Don't cheat yourself. Right. So if you shortchange, aka cheat yourself on these six principles, you are actually removing your place from history. You're erasing your own existence to deny any one of these principles out of the six. Yep. Yeah. It's telling you in the beginning of the book, if you shortchange yourself on just one of them, you erase yourself from history. You eradicate you yourself. Because the universal laws, these universal laws would not be, be able to rotate in a 360 degree cycle if one is missing. Correct. Okay. Therefore, the relationship of the vision to the six principles of growth and development is important for two main reasons. Love, life, loyalty, knowledge, wisdom, understanding involve divine truths and principles which can guide us into prosperity and peace of mind beyond our wildest dreams. And two, these principles encourage us 
to not leave any area of our lives unchanged and to truly become a reckoning power of people. Oh, so that means all 360 degrees of our life will be changed. Yes. If we adhere to the six principles of growth and development, follow the six principles of growth and development, all aspects, all areas of our lives will be changed in a positive and productive manner. You know what I'm looking at? It's two main ingredients that constitute civilization, right? Mm -hmm. And it's also two divinely important reasons that the vision and the six principles must coexist. So that's a parallel study that I'm going to do on my own. Okay, so if that's a parallel study that you're going to do on your own, shouldn't you share this parallel study with the rest of society so they can also study as well? So that way, when we come back, right, all of us would be able to be on the exact same page. So well, what is I don't this see why I shouldn't. So what's this parallel study you gonna do, brother? Well, what I'm looking at, right? Because it does tell us that the relationship of the vision to the six principles. So I want to find out that interweaving connection, right? Uh-huh. That makes the six principles so important to the vision. And how that ties into the two main ingredients of civilization. But what is the vision? Now we get to the beautiful part of it, right? Because the vision is for growth and development. So in order to reach growth and development, to reach the ultimate apex uh -huh. of growth and development, we have to incorporate what? The six principles. The six principles. Now, what's the second half of that? The second half? These principles. You said, Go ahead. Because you said it said, and how it relates. Oh, and how it relates to the vision, which is the six principles relating to the vision. Right. But now, this is the second half I was looking at, right? Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and do a brief overview of what I'm talking about with the study. Okay. The first main ingredient that comes to civilization, a group of people that have come together to form a community that has specific laws and obligations and is based upon love for the life of its members and encourages loyalty to the group's laws and principles, right? Right. Ingredient number one for civilization. The first main reason why the vision is important to the six principles is because love, life, loyalty, knowledge, wisdom, understanding involves divine truths and principles which can guide us into prosperity and peace of mind beyond our wildest dreams. Okay. So I want to explain this as simple as possible. I'm going to use me and you for example, right? The love I have for your life being backed by my loyalty to the laws and principles should be able to guide you into prosperity as well as a peace of mind and vice versa. True. True. You see what I'm saying? Right. Hey, I just did the first part of the assignment right there. <laughs> <laughs> the second part of the assignment, which I'm not going to do right now, is these principles encourage us to leave, to not leave any area of our lives unchanged and to truly become a reckoning power of people. This ties into the second ingredient for civilization. Okay, so what do reckoning mean? That which must be considered. Okay. And so we're talking about a reckoning of power of people. They truly become a reckoning power of people. Mm -hmm. that, that has to be considered. And power. What is power? Power is basically... What a force, yes, G, a force that has to be considered. Yes, I just check this out, right? I just want to read this. 
I got to read this, this second reason again. You know, watch what happens. These principles encourage us to leave, to not leave any area of our lives unchanged and truly become a reckoning power people. But right. why we become a reckoning power people? Because we are a group of people that have developed a system of knowledge, communication that is based upon reading and writing. This is Education. the first step. Education. To become yes. So let's look at this here. What are the four major methods and some use initiatives that we have to accomplish? Education, economical, political, and social development. That has completed our study for this week. And next week, we will be on the birth. Yes. Old concept, right? Yep. And see, this was a good study right here, bro. This yes. was a great study. It was fun. This was a great study. And so let's keep studying you all. Let's keep understanding the true essence of the blueprint. Send in your comments. And questions. Send in questions. Any problems, complaints, suggestions, anything that you may have, send them in. Let's address them. Let's grow and develop together. As one. As one mind, one body, one soul. Yeah. And on that note, this has been a beautiful, 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 beautiful study. I want to thank you all for your love and your support. Continue to love yourselves and continue to love your brothers and your sisters within the six universal laws of existence and the six principles of growth and development. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Peace.